Can't she abstain? Each encounter gives her strength. The effect is narcotic. The more she does it, the more she needs to do it. She will never stop. She can't. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. and we are here looking at the observation deck we've been summoned by Samara Kelly Chambers sent us down here because something is wrong let's go see what Samara has to say I am glad you came I must ask for your help that is not easy for me I'll do what I can. What do you need? When we met on Ilium, I told you about a very dangerous person I was pursuing. Using the information you obtained, I have located her. She's been going by the name Morinth. I would like to apprehend her before she disappears again. Let's ask about the importance. How important is this? Killing her has been my focus for 400 years. It is the most important thing in my life, and the reason I became a Justicar. Now, you have to wonder, people. You know Asari are long-lived, but to be on a mission, I will call it, for 400 years to kill someone and you haven't succeeded yet? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's ask about the location. Where is she? Omega, a nightclub called Afterlife, which seems a perfect place for her to hunt. Yes, we're familiar with Afterlife. Let's ask about the urgency. Didn't you say you'd pick up her trail after our mission? I know where she is, right now. In a month, she may be gone. This is the best opportunity I've ever had. Okay, let's ask who she is. Tell me about her. She is an Ardot Yakshi. It is a term from a dead Asari dialect. It means demon of the night winds. But that is mythology. She is simply a very dangerous woman who kills without mercy. Mm, sounds like you. You're dangerous too. As are you. But she is different. Morin suffers a rare genetic disorder. When she mates with you, there is no gentle melding of nervous systems. She overpowers yours, burns it out, hemorrhages your brain. You end up a mindless shell, and soon after, you are dead. Mm. That doesn't sound too pleasant. Let's ask about killing because of genes. So you hunt down these Asari just because they're born with a genetic condition? It manifests with maturity. When one is diagnosed, she is offered the chance to live in seclusion and comfort. If she refuses, it shows her addiction to the ecstasy she gets from killing her mates. There is no redemption for such a person. Let's ask about the compulsion. Can't she abstain? Each encounter gives her strength. The effect is narcotic. The more she does it, the more she needs to do it. She will never stop. She can't. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's ask about obscurity. Why isn't this ever mentioned in Asari literature or art? When we were primitive, there was much fascination with Ardot Yakshi. Some cultures worshipped them as gods of destruction. Now the Asari have a place in the galaxy, and they don't wish this defect to be widely known. As far as I know, only three exist today. Two chose a life of seclusion. The third ran. Morinth. She ran, and I am sworn to kill her. Okay. Is it wrong to want freedom? I don't know that I blame her for running. When she fled, she proved her addiction. She was not taking a great moral stand. She simply wants to keep killing. She is a tragic figure, but not a sympathetic one. Hmm. All right, is she that dangerous? Isn't she only deadly to the people she mates with? Each time she kills, she becomes stronger, smarter, and faster. And she's been doing this for 400 years. She confuses her victims, twists their feelings, they will do anything for her favor. 
All right. I'll, I'll have to think about it. If we have time, we'll deal with it. There is one thing more. This creature, this monster, she is my daughter. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. Anybody get chills from that? Okay. Let's ask about other children. You said this is genetic. How many children do you have? Three. And three Ardat Yakshi are in existence today. It is as it sounds. Marinth was always the wild one. She was happy and free. But selfish. You should have told me. I needed to know this a long time ago. I present no danger to anyone besides my own children. And this is not easy to speak of. Even 400 years after I learned it. My daughter's condition is my fault. And my redemption lies in killing her. Do not pity me. Simply understand my situation. Hmm. Wow. I, I, I kind of want to know more, people. I, I hope this is okay. I mean, this might be a little bit uh, paragonish or paragonic. But I want to know more. How did all this happen? I spent my youth on the move, adventuring. I killed people, mated with them, or just danced the night away. I learned so much, experienced so much. And then my matron days came. I could finally sit back, bask, and enjoy my family. But in one moment, it was all taken away. Cry me a river? Come on now. Um, well, I'm gonna say we should get back to work. That's a bit harsh. We need to get on with our mission. I understand. Nonetheless, if there is time, I would like to go to the Afterlife nightclub on Omega. Help me find my long-lost daughter. And kill her. So matter of fact. I'll think about it. If there's time, maybe we can go to Omega. Okay, I thought she was gonna... object more strenuously. Or try to take out control of the ship. Alright, we got six renegades. Nice. Okay. So, I think we now have all of the loyalty missions. There should not be anybody that wants to see me. Now let's no talk to Kelly. You, Commander. Okay. I'm surprised by Thane's spiritual side. His psych profile mentioned little of it. And he carries himself with such cold confidence. You'll have to keep an eye on that one. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? How's the crew? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. Yes, Commander. I don't think I'm going to get her to do the fish. But I don't have any. That's part of the problem, too, because they're all dead. Anyhow. <laughs> Let's check this terminal. Still alive. Detective An Anaya. Greetings, Commander. I'm not completely sure this will get to you, but thanks again for helping me deal with Samara, who we just spoke with. The Eclipse Mercs have gotten real quiet around here, and my superiors have backed off too. No idea if the two are related, but hopefully the next time I meet a Justicar, I can give her the respect she deserves. I still can't believe I worked a case with one of them. You're a lucky human. If I find any more data on her target, I'll pass it along. Okay. But, you know, I, I, as much as I respect Samara, I mean, her power, her grace, her elegance, all that stuff, to be hunting someone for 400 years... There's that's, that's something just not right about that. It's like, you, you are not doing the job. And I, I'd have to say, you're, you must not be a good Justicar. Come on! Anyhow. Let's go ahead to the map here. So, we've decided to leave the Citadel. We're not going to help Thane because this is one of those missions where having a very high Renegade score is going to come in beneficial. So we're going to go and do something else. 
Um, actually, I need the mass relay. Where is it? It's time to go to Tachanka. I do not think that we need any high degree of Paragon or Renegade to complete these missions here. Alright, so we're in the Arlac system. You all may remember Arlac from Mass Effect 3. Alright, so we will go ahead and head down. I will scan these planets after the mission is completed. So here we can kill two birds with one stone, help Grunt, help Morden. So we're just going to take both of them with us. Alright, let's read about Tachanka though. Scarred by bombardment craters, radioactive rubble, cloaking ash, salt flats, and alkaline seas. Tachanka can barely support life. Thousands of years ago, life grew in fierce abundance under the F-Class star Arlac. A rake clan word meaning Eye of Wrath. Three analogs grew in thick jungles, tree analogs, sorry, grew in thick jungles, their roots growing out of shallow, silty seas. Life fed upon life in an evolutionary crucible. This world died in nuclear firestorms after the Krogan split the atom. A little ice age of nuclear winter killed off much of the remaining plant life. In recent centuries, many Krogan have returned to their homeworld. The reduced albedo has caused global temperatures to rise. In order to maintain livable temperatures, a vast shroud was assembled at the L1 Lagrange point. It is maintained by the Council Demilitarization Enforcement Mission, CDEM which is based on orbiting battle stations. CDM advisory. Visitors to Tachanka land at their own risk. The CDM will not attempt to extract citizens threatened by clan warfare. Travel advisory. The ecology of Tachanka is deadly. Nearly every native species engages in some predatory behavior. Even the remaining vegetation is carnivorous. Travel beyond guarded areas is strongly discouraged. All right, people, you've got it. Now, let's get our landing party together. Morden and Grunt, please report to the landing bay. Morden and Grunt, to the landing bay. is loyal. Let's go ahead and switch his uniform. Alright, we got Morden, and we got Grunt. Oh, let's see here. Ooh, what can we do with Grunt? Hmm. I don't know. Can we... Yeah, I can't even get the incendiary ammo. All right, so let's undo these. We'll go ahead and evolve Concussive Shot. So, Heavy Concussive Shot propels enemies with Bone Crushing Force. And gives your impact radius to knock down multiple enemies. We'll just go with Heavy Concussive Shot. Oh, we got some more points here. All right, we'll let him have some incendiary ammo. And let's see, he has got... Why does he have the scimitar? Hold on, people. Claymore. And I want him to have the Matok. Oh, they just really just switched out whatever they want. Okay. This is cool for Morden, Predator, Locust, Matok, Locust, Carnifex, Blackstorm. I think we're ready. Alright, 
we have touched down on Tachanka. And we will continue with our loyalty quest on Tachanka in our next episode. This is Hill, and I'm out.